Hello from the backyard. It's Gina with Backyard Beauty here to show you a few things that are going on in the backyard. Um, so I tried a few things, experimented with some things. Some have been huge wins, some have not been. And what I'm talking about is overwintering or fall sowing a multitude of things where um, kind of having seeds in the ground and hoping that they grow throughout the winter or leaving full plants in the ground that were growing all summer long and then that they just stayed in the ground and overwintered. So I wanted to show you um, some updates. So right now it's mid-March and our last frost date here in zone 6B isn't until April 15th. I kind of think that's a lot of hooey though because we always have frost warnings all the way through Mother's Day. That's kind of where I'm from around St. Louis is kind of what people say is the safe time to plant. Anytime before Mother's Day, so May 8th-ish, um, you're probably going to be going out there and covering it up or bringing it inside because I can't remember ever not having some sort of frost warning into May. So anyway, let's go see the things that are growing and the things that aren't. Here we are in the back corner or one of the back corners of our backyard. Winter sewing containers doing well. Um, right in here, I left a um, pincushion flower. Thank you, Scabiosa. Those guys in the ground, they're not looking good, but sometimes it's like just leave them in there and see what happens. I also put some seeds in the ground there and I don't see any life yet, which is just fine. Um, these guys were a special kind of Rudbeckia. Um, I think they were Sahara mix or something like that. But everything's dead except for the life underneath. So that's really exciting. I fully believe they will all make it and come back. Yes, look at that. Um, and I'm really excited for the thought of longer stem length on these guys. And then in this area, I just recently sowed some cool hardy annual seeds right into the ground like bachelor's buttons and straw flower. Um, and again, I would not expect to see anything from them right now and I don't, so that's good. Okay, over here in all this weed barrier, this was my big fall sowing experiment. In the, let's see here, the back row, I did a bunch of agrostema or corn cockle and then Larkspur, and then um, Love in a Mist. And I know it's only mid-March, but I don't think much made it. I was actually so convinced of that that I went and got some more Bachelor Button seeds and just re-sowed them. Um, I mean, I think that's a weed, y'all. I don't, I don't even think that's, that's a plant. Now there, I believe, is some Love in a Mist coming, which is great. So it's not like a total failure but I mean I was expecting every one of these holes to have some life in it oh I think that's a oops sorry guys so that little seedling right there I think is from a bachelor button seed that I just sowed last week so that's exciting but um yeah and again like this is what I was hoping to see um this, uh, this, this Love in a Mist did really well. I just wish that was what all of these holes looked like. But alas, they do not. Just a few. So in the ones that don't have anything, I just went ahead and put some more seeds. I think I also did a few Love in a Mist. Um, okay, so over here, these guys those sticks are just like annual bee balm and for and again I just wanted to leave them in the ground I don't really expect them to come back but those are my overwintered um, sweet William they are biennials I believe and they've never bloomed I just started them last summer so I'm really excited they were not covered at all and they look great um, so I'm definitely expecting blooms from them um, over here are some more um, scabiosa pincushion flower that I just decided to try to overwinter. We'll see what happens if anything comes from them. But, um, okay, so this was my row of fever few, and look, it's all coming back. I'm so excited. Um, so, love all that green. Um, yeah, so I'm just leaving all that there, 
and really excited about Feverfew in year two. Here's another huge win. I don't really know what it is. Here's some options. The options are Ami Dara, Ami Green Mist, or um, Orlea. But I have these little um, baby plants kind of all over here. There's another one back there. So they're small, but I believe that they are from reseeding. I did not plant these and that is glorious. So I believe those are going to do great. Um, pretty sure for sure that this is Orlea. I don't know though if it's Dara or Ami. I don't care. I'm just going to let these guys go and see what we have. Um, so all over the place. Yay! Thank you, Lord, for reseeding. I did nothing except let the plants die. And, oh, here's another one. Yeah, that's something. That's something good. And I'm so excited about it. And we're just going to wait and see what it is. And I don't even care that I don't know. Um, oh, and here, yeah, look at that. All these guys. Were we just, just on their own? Popping up. Over here, though, these guys, so this one and that one and that one those were fall sown bee balm you can barely see it but that's what it means to say so they were completely uncovered they have lasted so I'm excited to see this is the annual version but it is rocking and rolling so that's bee balm we'll see what it looks like and then over here yeah I, I'm wondering if that's over here was Orlea and Dill. Oh, you know what? It was also Bupleurum. And I, I think this was Bupleurum and it like really stunk. Like it didn't do much. I thought that I just couldn't grow Bupleurum, but I did try to let it, let the seed pods just stay on the plant. So, oh my gosh, I wonder if that planted itself. Oh, I'm so excited. I will let you know. Okay, here's my little mini hoop house. Anemone and ranunculus. Oh gosh, guys. Sorry. Ooh. We're looking okay. We are looking okay. I think some of them got a little sad because we had some really cold temps. And all they have is two layers of frost cloth, but I'll take it. Mid-March. So this area is right up alongside of our house and it does not get a ton of sun. So this is always my experimental patch, but all where you can see that the dirt has been worked, I did lark spur there just yesterday. Just moved around the dirt and put some seeds down. Over here was a patch of extra anemone corms. We'll see what happens there. Um, along the back of the house are gladiola bulbs um, which most of them came back this will be year three for them we'll see how they do and these are some extra snaps snapdragons that this is I'll show you a bigger area in just a minute but probably one of my biggest experiments was overwintering snaps um, and just letting them stay in the ground so I would love to know what you think if I should just trim them back to about two or three inches from the ground um, I think I should but I just really want to let them do what they're going to do. And then look at this. That's right, eucalyptus. I don't expect it to make it. It has not been covered all winter. The only protection is being pretty close to the house. So I'll let you know. So this is the other back corner of our backyard. Over there is where I usually put zinnias, among a few other things. Um, but right here, this portion right here gets a little bit, a little bit more shade thanks to this tree right here, but we have trimmed it quite a bit. So I'm hoping that it gets less shade, um, because this is the big snapdragon experiment. Um, hello, Mr. Springbird. Um, so yeah, these guys were at all different 
ages um, stemming from starting very early spring last summer starting in june starting in july just because it i my snaps never did well so i kept trying to start them um but what's really encouraging here is look at all that brand new growth so yeah i think i'm gonna have to cut like right there which is totally fine i will do that soon but also um okay now that i'm getting closer i thought that these were all the baby snaps maybe they are i can't tell maybe that's a weed um, but these had little seedlings of snapdragons in all these holes. Hmm. And here I thought they totally overwintered. But now that I'm looking closer, I need your help. Are those snaps? Or is that a weed? Okay, we shall see. Let me know what you think. I got a whole tray of snaps in the house that I can transfer out here if need be. So these are all Chinese forget-me-nots that come back every year and they seem to spread a little bit and like not invasively but I love Chinese forget-me-nots so that's looking good um, and again those are the snapdragons but I wanted to bring you over here to the yarrow so I started a bunch of yarrow um, last summer and planted them out um, I know some people grow them as an annual, but in our zone, they do really well as perennial and come back year after year. I've got some bigger ones that I bought as plants like two years ago, but all these little guys started from seed. This is our mailbox post, but I love putting bulbs here. So we've got lots of, um, yeah, tulips and daffodils coming up here. Lovely. But over here, I'm really excited to show you this. Um, not this past fall, but the previous fall, I put a bunch of sea holly seeds in the ground or eryngium, and that overwintered really well. And these guys were green plants all last summer. Absolutely zero blooms but that's okay because they are coming back. And in their legitimate second full summer, I believe they're going to give me lots of those amazing blue blooms. Um, I think that's another one. This is a honest honesty plant. And so again, yeah, so that was just green all last summer, but it's coming back and I think it's going to give me blooms this time around. Um, oh. One more thing. Actually, a few more things. Okay, hyacinth bulbs, look at that. Thank you, Jesus, for hyacinths. Daffodils, and then all around this tree, I transplanted our sedum a few years back. It was getting too much sun. It was like not happy where it was. But I always love seeing the sedum come back every year. It's bright green coming from the brown. Oh, here's another good one. Yes. All right, that's it. There's Morgan. Hello. And Timmy. And my husband coming home from work. Time to make dinner.